Hello students, my name is Nihati Sey and thanks for watching Edipedia Word Videos. My topic for the presentation is Heterochromatin and Euchromatin. Okay? Traditionally, interface chromatin is classified as either euchromatin or heterochromatin depending on its level of compaction. Okay? Euchromatin, it has a less compact structure and is often described as a 11 nanometer fiber that has the appearance of beads on a string appearance where the beads represent nucleosome and the string represents DNA. In contrast, heterochromatin is more compact and is often reported as being composed of a nucleosome array condensed into a 30 nanometer fiber. It should be noted, however, that a 30 nanometer fiber has been visualized in vivo and it, this extent is questionable. Okay? So the compaction level of the interface chromosome is not completely uniform, euchromatin and heterochromatin. Euchromatin, you can say they are less condensed regions of the chromosome, they are transcriptionally active, the region where 30 nanometer fiber forms a radial loop domain. Then comes the heterochromatin, which are on the contrary to the euchromatin, they are tightly compacted regions of the chromosome. They are transcriptionally inactive, radial loop domains compacted even further. Okay. Our body is composed of billion of cells. That a typical cell contains a nucleus and the nucleus contains chromatin. According to biochemists, the operational deficient, uh, definition of chromatin is the DNA, protein and RNA complex which are extracted from the eukaryotic lysed interface nuclei. According to them, the chromatin is the product formed from a packaged special proteins commonly known as histones. I am again repeating all this. To put it simply, the chromatin is primarily the combination of deoxyribonucleic acid and simply DNA and other types of protein. Chromatin is the one responsible for packaging DNA into smaller volume so that they can fit inside the cell. It is also responsible for strengthening the DNA for mitosis and meiosis to take place. Chromatin also prevents damaging the DNA and controls the gene expression and the replication of the DNA. There are two varieties of chromatin as I have told you, uh, euchromatin and heterochromatin. These two forms are distinguished in a cytological manner dealing with the how intensely each form is stray. Okay? The euchromatin is less intense than heterochromatin as I have told you and this only indicates that the heterochromatin has a tighter DNA packaging. To find out more about the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin, my presentation will provide you a quick view regarding these two chromatin forms. Okay? The lightly packed material is called as euchromatin. Though it is lightly packed in the form of DNA, RNA and protein, it is def definitely rich in gene concentration and is usually under active transcription. If you are going to examine pro eukaryotes and prokaryotes, you will find the presence of euchromatin. Okay? And heterochromatin is only found in eukaryotes when stained and observed under a optical microscope. Euchromatin, they resemble light colored bands while heterochromatin is a dark colored bands. The standard structure of euchromatin is unfolded, elongated and only about the size of 10 nanometer microfibril. Okay? This minute chromatin functions in the transcription of DNA to mRNA products that we will be studying in the functions of uh, the gene regulatory proteins including the RNA polymerase complex are able to bind with the DNA sequence to, due to unfolded structure of the euchromatin. When these substances are already bound, the transcription process begins. Okay? The activity of the euchromatin aid in the cell survival. Okay? There are two types of heterochromatins. One is constitutive heterochromatin and other is facultative heterochromatin. Okay? 
means so you can say that uh, these variety lie on the continuum between two extremes of uh, constitutive and he facultative heterochromatin both play a role in the expression of the genes okay first we will talk about the constitutive heterochromatin constitutive heterochromatin can affect the genes near them that means position affect variegation okay it is usually repetitive and forms a structural function such as centromeres or telomeres. In addition to acting as an attractor for other gene expression or repression signals. Okay? You can say in short that these are the reasons that are always heterochromatin and second they are permanently inactive with regard to transcription. Now comes to the facultative heterochromatin, the region that can interconvert between euchromatin and heterochromatin, examples of bar body. Facultative heterochromatin is the result of the genes that are silenced through a mechanism such as uh, histone deacetylation or PI RNA through RNA interference. Uh, RNA interference phenomena we will be studying in the 12th zoology. Just know here that facultative heterochromatin is the result of the genes that are silenced through the mechanism such as histone deacetylation or RNA interference. It is not repetitive and share the compact structure of constitutive heterochromatin. However, under specific developmental or environmental signaling cues, it can lose its condensed structure and become transcriptionally active. Okay? Heterochromatin has been associated with the dye and the trimethylation of H3K9 in certain portions of the genome. Just know that uh, methylation means removal of acetyl group and uh, methylation means addition of the methyl group okay the representation uh, of uh, euchromatin and the heterochromatin euchromatin is a 30 nanometer fiber which is anchored in a radial loop and heterochromatin are the great uh, are a greater compaction of the radial loop as you can see here okay and this is a telomere and th the and yes this heterochromatin it forms centromere okay because of the greater compaction and these euchromatin they form uh, as the chromatid structure of the chromosome and these are the telomeres okay now come to the differences euchromatin and heterochromatin when it comes to structure euchromatin they are very less condensed they are open and accessible on the contrary to this heterochromatin they are condensed closed and inaccessible now come to the DNA sequences in eukaryotin and heterochromatin. Euchromatin DNA sequences they are generally rich in genes, okay? Whereas heterochromatin uh, DNA sequences are the repetitive elements. When it comes to activity, euchromatin they are expressed and active, and heterochromatin they are repressed and silent, okay? Now come to the epigenetic markers, okay? Epigenetic markers uh, such as DNA methylation. DNA methylation means addition of methyl group to the DNA strand. So if we talk about the DNA methylation, then uh, uh, euchromatin is a hypomethylated form. That means very less methyl groups goes and adds up to the do that uh, structure okay now on the contrary to this heterochromatin they are the hypermethylation sites okay that means more and more and uh, more of a methyl group goes and attaches with it okay come to the other epigenetic marker that is a histone acetylation acetylation means addition of acetyl group Hyperacetylation of histone H3 and H4 is seen in euchromatin and hypoacylation of histone H3 and H4 is seen in heterochromatin. Okay? Histone methylation, uh, if we talk about histone methylation, that means addition of the methyl group to the histone proteins, okay? Histone basic proteins. Then you can see that the uh, 
this is H3 that means uh, histone uh, 3 protein and to its K4 part methyl two, two methyl groups got attached to then this is known as histone methylation same is the case with this structure H3 as we know that it is a protein histone protein histone basic protein and to its K4 site methyl 3 methyl group is attached with it and thus it formed this structure and on the contrary to this in heterochromatin these structures are formed in the histone methylation as the epigenetic markers okay This is a double helix uh, DNA which is about 2 nanometer and uh, this level of compaction arises and it forms 11 nanometer nucleosome. Okay, that uh, these are the linker DNA that wraps of a DNA around a histone octamer which is which is composed of eight or eight histone proteins okay nucleosome gives us the appearance of bead on a string that is motioki mala okay and then of compaction arises more and uh, thus it forms a three dimensional zigzag uh, structure via histone protein that is h1 and other dna binding protein which is about 30 nanometer in diameter okay and thus it forms solenoid 3d zigzag uh, structure and this anchors of the radial loop to the nucle uh, nuclear matrix okay now come to the function of euchromatin euchromatin it participate in the active transcription of dna to mrna products okay the unfolded structure allows gene regulatory proteins called rna polymerase the complex to bind to the dna sequence which can then initiate a transcription process okay some of these roles can be attributed to the dense packing of dna which makes it less accessible to protein factors that usually bind dna or its associated factors for example naked double stranded dna ends would usually be interpreted by the cell as damaged or viral dna triggering the cell cycle arrest or dna repair or destruction of the fragments such as by endonuclease in bacteria okay some regions of chromatin are very densely packed with fibers that display a condition comparable to that of chromosome at mitosis heterochromatin is generally clonally inherited when a cell divides the two daughter cells typically contain heterochromatin within the same regions of the dna resulting in epigenetic inheritance okay Variation cause heterochromatin to encroach on adjacent genes or recede from the genes at the extremes of domains. Okay, transcribable materials may be repressed by being positioned at these boundary domains. This give rise to the expression level that vary from cell to cell, which may be demonstrated by position effect variegation, which is not a near force. So let's proceed towards the other chromatin uh, function of Heterochromatin has been associated with several functions from gene regulation to the protection of the chromosome integrator, which I, I have already told you. Looped domains, which is about uh, 300 nanometer compaction level of the euchromatin, and the further compaction of the radial loops takes place, which is about 700 nanometer uh, in diameter, and this is the compaction level in heterochromatin. Just imagine. Compaction level in euchromatin is 300 and uh, whereas uh, compaction level in heterochromatin is 700 nanometer. During interphase, most chromosomal regions are euchromatin. Okay? Formation of a scaffold from a nuclear matrix and further compaction of all radial loops, which is about 1400 nanometer in diameter. And this forms metaphase chromosome. Okay? Now we will be studying about the metaphase chromosome by condensin. During interphase, condensin is in the cytoplasm. These are the condensins, okay? And these are the condensins. And during interphase, condensin is in the cytoplasm. And this is the decondensed chromosome. Now what happens? This decondensed chromosome 
it forms a radial loop to the Euchromatin which is about 30, 300 nanometer in diameter as we know that the compaction level in Euchromatin is about 300 nanometer in diameter okay then it got converted into more condensed form as it was uh, in the decondensed form then it got converted into the condensed forms and these are the astral rays that got segregated which helps in the division of the cell of course and uh, this was the G1's S and G2 phase and uh, this got converted and it started of mitotic phase that means it will divide okay condensin travels into the nucleus these are the condensins these were the condensin and during interphase condenses in the cytoplasm but uh, as soon as uh, cell enters into the mitotic phase the condensin it travels into the nucleus and gets goes and gets attached with the decondensed chromosome to make it more compact okay and thus it gets converted into heterochromatin or about uh, 700 nanometer in diameter as we know that the uh, it has a greater compaction than the euchromatin euchromatin it had uh, 300 nanometer diameter and the heterochromatin has 700 nanometer uh, compaction okay and as we can see that the condensin binds to the chromosome and compacts the radial loops okay the number of the loop has not changed however the diameter of each loop is got smaller I hope it's clear to all of you. Now let's proceed towards the metaphase uh, chromosome. As the cell enters, uh, now the first question is why we are studying the metaphase chromosome instead of uh, prophase chromosome? Why are we studying metaphase chromosome? Because as the cell enters M phase, the level of the compaction changes dramatically. By the end of the prophase, sister chromatins are entirely heterochromatic. Two parallel chromatins have an overall diameter of uh, 1400 nanometer. Okay. These highly condensed metaphase chromosomes undergo little gene transcription. In metaphase chromosome, the radial loops are highly compacted and stay anchored to a scaffold. The scaffold is formed from a nuclear matrix and histones are needed for the compaction of the radial loops. Okay. Two multi-protein complexes help to form and organize metaphase chromosomes. As I have told you, condensin and the cohesin. Condensin, it plays a vital role in the chromosome condensation and uh, whereas cohesin, it plays a critical role in uh, chromatin alignment. Both contain a category of protein called as SMC proteins. SMC means a structural maintenance of uh, chromosomes. SMC proteins they use energy from ATP that is adenosine triphosphate and catalyzes changes into chromosome structure. So what are the interpretations out of this study? A 10,000 fold compaction of the DNA into the metaphase chromosome occurs. A 250 or more fold compaction is achieved by the level of a structure beyond supernucleosomes. This additional compaction could be by the orderly stacking of loops parallel to the chromosome axis that is alpha or perpendicular to the chromosomal axis that is beta. Okay? Alternatively, the compaction could be due to less ordered arrangement of DNA in metaphase chromosome that is C. Students, let's view the process of the chromosome organization once again. This is the DNA duplex, which is about 2 nanometer in diameter. It is the simplest level chromatin, is a double helical uh, structure of a DNA. Then it goes and uh, com that means a uh, greater compaction takes place and thus it for the DNA is complexed with the histone to form a histone protein, which are about 8. Uh, and each nucleosome consists of 8 histone proteins around which the DNA wraps 1.6 times. Uh, okay, and uh, then a chromo chromatosome consists of a nucleosome plus the histone protein that is H1 protein and it forms uh, about 11 nanometer in diameter. Okay, now 
what happens? A nucleosome fold up to produce 30 nanometer fiber, which is solenoid. Okay, and then sixth step is that it forms a loop averaging about 300 nanometer in length, and thus it forms euchromatin. Okay. The 300 nanometer uh, fibers are compressed and folded to produce 250 nanometer wide fibers and which are about 700 nanometer long, uh, diameter and thus it forms euchromatin, okay? And tight coiling of the 250 nanometer fiber produces a chromatid of the chromosome which is about 1400 nanometer in diameter, okay? So this comes to an end and in the next section of my presentation we will be studying about the cell cycle. So till then stay tuned and keep watching Edupedia World videos.